Hello guys. Uh, hello guys. Uh, it's me, your tutor, and uh, today we are going to uh, resume our class from the point where we left it in our last lecture. So uh, let me recap. Let me have a recap for you guys so that you can remember what we studied in our last lecture. So I, I taught you uh, this example how to convert an NFA into regular expression and a regular expression into NFA. So these were the examples that we studied in our last class converting a regular expression to an automata and then again abs uh, converting it to epsilon nfa and i hope you know what does the word epsilon nfa means um, and then again the same things so uh, you know uh, regular expression to epsilon nfa example this was the last example that we studied so from here today we will start uh, our course from here so what have we shown so far what uh, we have shown to you guys uh, what I have shown to you guys is that regular expressions and finite state automata are really two different ways of expressing the same thing, okay? The same thing, okay? Uh, you, it means that if you convert a regular expression into finite state automata, so the, the resulting finite state automata is an equivalent of the regular expression. Or in other words, if you uh, derive a regular expression expression from n from a finite state automata, so the resulting or the derived regular expression is an equivalent of that uh, uh, NFA or uh, uh, finite state automata. Uh, FSA are NFA non-deterministic uh, finite automata. So these are interrelated terms. I hope you know already. Uh, the the prerequisites for this course that at least you know uh, you have some basics of compiler construction, or you know somehow about computational theory or theory of automata. Uh, so these are any you know TOC theory of computation. So I hope uh, you would have uh, studied these kind of subjects in your early classes or at your undergrad level. So what I have shown so far you the second point on this slide is that uh, uh, that in some cases you may find it easier to start with one and move to the other yes you know in some cases uh, you may take a start from an nfa or dfa and then gradually you can move on to derive a regular expression from that nfa or dfa so uh, let's suppose example greater we have the language of an even numbers of ones is typically easier to design as an nfa or dfa and then convert it to a regular expression yes uh, if you have a language of an even numbers of ones so it's not easy to write a regular expression for this language or for this question or for this demand but first if you first try to develop an NFA or DFA for this demand for this question and then later on you try to derive a regular expression from that NFA or DFA so it will be very easy uh, to derive them so this is uh, uh, what uh, I expect from you guys that you have understood these two points and so far you are with me and so far it's fun and it's easy to let study and understand these kind of things and these kind of approaches okay so before moving on to the next slide where we will study the algebraic class for regular expression so but before going to that uh, slide let me observe whether students are with me uh, or students uh, have joined me or not so let's go to the comment section of our students to uh, some of students are saying hi, hello, salam, walaikum salam, and uh, no serious comment so far. Okay, let's go back to our class. Uh, so, 
So the next slide is algebraic laws for regular expressions. Uh, just like we have an algebra for arithmetic, yes, in, in, in mathematics we have algebra for our arithmetic operations, our arithmetic section. We also have an algebra for regular expression. Yeah, in the same way we have algebra for our regular expressions. So while there are some similarities to arithmetic algebra, do uh, though we have some uh, similarities to arithmetic algebra. However, uh, we also have a bit different uh, difference. Uh, I mean, however, uh, in some cases, it is different for regular expressions. I mean, the, 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 the similarities of algebraic uh, alge algebra for arithmetic. Okay, uh, you may find uh, many similarities there, but uh, the algebra for regular expression, you may change some new. You may find some new things, some new changes. I mean, some changes, uh, some things are different uh, than that algebra for arithmetic. Okay, what things are different? Are uh, what? Uh, things are new for you let's go to the next slide so that you can understand okay gradually and we you see at the, at the very last point on this slide is this is the different uh, differentiality or uh, the difference note that there is no commutative law for concatenation okay so there is no commutative law for concatenation in algebra for regular expression you see they are not equal there is a not equal symbol okay so okay commutative law for union exists okay there is a difference okay commutative law for union and commutative law for concatenation so commutative law for union exists okay here uh, l and m if you add them so from one side adding l plus m and then on the other side right side if you add m plus uh, l so both will be equal as there is a equal symbol between them okay then associative law for union also exists okay l plus m within brackets then plus n is equal to l plus m plus n within brackets so both sides will be equal the results from both sides will be the same and then associative law for concatenation so you know uh, lm within brackets dot n is equal to l dot mn within brackets both are equal so the associative law for concatenation also exists here However, the commutative law for concatenation does not exist here. Lm is not equal to ml here. Okay. I hope you are understanding what I am saying. It's very easy. This is the algebra for regular expression. Today, we are studying algebra for regular expression. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, slide 2. Uh, but I am very keen to have uh, another glance on the comment section. So, let's go to the comment section. If there is any comment, any question from student side. So, uh, uh, I'm very keen to answer their questions. Okay, uh, so no question. Let's go back to our new slide. Algebra for regular expression. You know the identity for union. Identity, you know, in mathematics algebra, anything if uh, if you multiply with one way, you know, there are two identities: multiplicative identity and additive identity. Anything which you will, uh, I mean, uh, if you, we have a term, let's suppose 5 plus 0 is equal to 5. So, 0 is an additive identity. Uh, nothing happened to the result. In the same way, multiplicative identity 5 dot 1 or 5 multiplied multiply by 1 is equal to 5. So, 1 is multi multiplicative identity because it doesn't uh, have any effect on the result. So, in the same way, we have identity for union in regular expression. So, L plus uh, 0 is equal to 0 plus L. Uh, the result is L. So, it means this is a uh, identity for union. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, you, you. some people also call it phi or empty, whatever. So, so the same thing, 0 or 3. Okay. Uh, the next is, uh, the next point is the identity for concatenation is uh, L with empty string is equal to empty string with L is equal to L. The result is L. In either case, the result will be L. In the same way, in either case, the result will be L. So this is the identity for union. This is the identity for concatenation. And then the annihilator, okay, annihilator, the annihilator for concatenation is that phi uh, empty multiplied by L with 
is equal to L when, and then empty is equal to empty so in either case the result will be empty or zero so this is annihilator for concatenation okay then left distributula L M plus N within brackets is equal to L M plus L N so this la holds true as left distributula okay as a left distributula and then the right distributula again m plus n within brackets dot l is equal to l dot m plus l dot n r in other words l m plus l n so this law also holds true okay this is another law we call it right distributula in the l in the algebra for regular expressions and then the item uh item potent law Add important law okay and then the add important law l plus l is equal to l if you add two languages the result will be the same language i mean l okay so this is add important law uh, let's go to the next slide laws involving closure uh, you know uh, guys let me tell you that we have two closure uh, you may call it properties or closures uh, one is positive closure the other is clean closure sometimes it is also called clean operator or clean star or clean closure all these names are the same um, same thing okay uh, in clean closure uh, we also do we also do consider the empty string uh, or in other words zero or more and in positive closure we can we, we, we say that at least there should be one, one okay I mean one or more okay uh, uh, if, if you find uh, a plus symbol or any uh, variable or any uh, how, lateral so I uh, simply in a language so it means that uh, one or more one or more for uh, positive closure and uh, static uh, uh, clean star or clean closure or clean operator it means zero or more so if you have a language with clean star and then Again, clean star is a whole uh, outside of brackets. So the result will be the same. L clean closure or an L star. So that is closing in already closed expression does not change the language. It means that it will not affect the language. It will not change the language. The result, the result will be the same language. Okay. Then uh, phi or static uh, means uh, empty string. The result of this language will be empty string okay or uh, in other words if you don't call it language you can call it uh, uh, closing and already closed expression uh, does not change the language yeah so this is an expression with static so it, it will not change the language okay then empty string with static its result will be always uh, empty string okay then L plus, this is what I was talking about, uh, positive closure. So L plus is equal to L, L static is equal to L static L. These three are the same things. Uh, if you normally take L plus of any expression and then you also take simple L, then you multiply it with L clean closure. So again, the result will be same from these two. And if uh, and, uh, and even if you multiply both the languages or, uh, or, or in other words, you use, sorry, in, in other words, if you take the clean closure of L and then you multiply it with L, so the result will be the same, which normally you got from these two. Okay. So more of a definition than Allah. What does it, does it mean? More of a definition than Allah. Okay. So let's see more of a definition then Allah L static is equal to L plus and then plus empty string. They both are equal. The result which you normally, uh, the result which you normally uh, get from right hand side will be equivalent to the left hand side. And then L with question mark is means they, uh, is, is equal to empty string plus L they both are equal okay please I would request you that normally we don't have enough time to teach you the basics so I hope uh, as I already asked you that at least you should have a prerequisites of uh, such uh, subjects or such languages so that you can feel easy in understanding we can't go too much in detail in uh, at the grassroots level 
every time because uh, it, it affects our teaching style so uh, at hope uh, and such kind of uh, subjects are normally taught at a graduate level or a postgraduate level so at least we expect you uh, expect from you that uh, you have the basics okay let's go to the next slide checking Allah okay how normally you can check Allah whether it holds or, or, or doesn't hold uh, okay suppose we are told that the law R plus S whole clean star is equal to R star S star and then uh, whole star I mean uh, within brackets uh, R S within brackets and then whole star of these uh, two, two okay so it means holds for regular expression how would we check that this claim is true okay we normally claim that these two uh, left hand side is equal to right hand side and this regular expression holds true so how we can validate this claim whether it's true or false so we can uh, validate this claim in this way number one convert the regular expression to dfa and minimize the dfas how we normally minimize the dfa i have already taught you this by eliminating some states uh, okay, uh, uh, to see if they are equivalent and after minimization if you found that they are equivalent so we will cover the minimization later in detail. So if you found that both are equal, so okay the law holds true, we will say that the law holds true. But if they both don't equal, uh, I mean you got a different regular expression for, it, for, for the same uh, uh, automata diagram, I mean in effect so then you may suspect that the result is wrong and uh, uh, there might be much chances much more chances that this law does not hold true the second point we can use the concretia uh, concretization test okay concretization test we can use the concretization test think of r and s okay the above example r and s as if they were single symbols rather than placeholder of placeholders for language that is r and s okay what does this mean that uh, if you want to uh, check whether the law holds true or not so oh, you should think r and s as a normal literals are symbols single symbols rather than placeholders for languages okay so test whether the law holds under the concrete symbol and, and under those concrete symbol uh, we should uh, test whether the law holds true or not if so then this is a true law and if not then the law is false okay if uh, the law holds under the concrete symbol true okay we will say okay the the, the law is true okay so uh, concretization is a technique of testing your law whether the law is true or false and um, in that case you need to consider or think uh, for your uh, ex uh, I mean uh, language literals R and S as uh, single symbols uh, uh, rather than placeholders and uh, later on uh, under the concrete symbols uh, you may get whether the law is false or true okay so this is a method for checking Allah as I told you please we expect uh, at least basics from you for studying this language let's go to the next slide uh, concretization test okay concretization test let's uh, there is an example for our example R plus S whole closure is equal to R static S static and then whole closure okay uh, clean I, I'm talking what clean closure okay clean star we can substitute 0 for y r and 1 for s the left side is clearly any sequence of zeros and ones yes so this is I mean here and I, I know this it was not easy for you to understand these two points it, those were difficult but uh, before because of pre-awareness I mentioned I, I included a couple of examples for you guys so that you can understand these points with the help of examples so here are uh, the examples on the next slide this is the first example you know if, 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 if uh, you want to test uh, this law uh, by using the concretization test so this is how you can 
validate or you can test your law whether it is true or false how you can do you just substitute zero for r here and one for s and then the left side is clearly any sequence of zeros and ones okay if you will open this ex, uh, expression so you may get a regular expression or you may if you if you, if you open this uh, left hand side this rule so the result will be a regular expression and it will include a sequence of zeros and ones and and then if you will open the right hand side uh, the right hand law okay so the right side also denotes any string of zeros and ones since zero and ones are each in yes uh, if you will if you you will substitute uh, uh, zero for r and one for s so this equation uh, this right hand side will become like this and if you will open it so yes the the, the the result will be a sequence of zeros and ones so now hence we can say that yes the whole the law holds true and left hand side is equal to the right hand side okay let's go to the last slide of our today's lecture so the the, the, the topic the concretization test is still continued and it is the last slide of our today's class note uh, there is a note uh, i have uh, mentioned on the top of this slide is that extensions of the test beyond regular expressions may fail yes uh, the extensions of the test beyond regular expressions if you are go, uh, taking uh, are checking any law beyond its limits or uh, if you are uh, extensions of the test beyond or uh, if you are extending your test beyond the regular expression so it may get failed so here is an example consider the law we have a law l uh, um, intersection m intersection n is equal to l intersection m so this is clearly false so how to test that this is false okay let's come let l is equal to m and m is equal to a the language uh, uh, within brackets it is a so we may think it is a, a it is a language and it has some literals okay or uh, um, uh, in other words it is a grammar okay and n is equal to empty and a is not equal to empty okay but if l is equal to a and m is equal to b and n is equal to c then l intersection m does not equal l intersection m intersection n which is empty yes definitely it will be it will be empty you know as uh, a is not equal to empty okay the the, the condition here that this uh, if you will uh, get the regular expression from this language so uh, it will not be an empty an empty and then if you will apply this by using this uh, how should i say this combination of this um, uh, this property so which uh, which becomes empty so here uh, obviously we say that this law is false the test would say this law is true the test yeah the test would say this law is true but it is not because we are applying the test beyond regular expression you know here i i hope you can understand that we are testing the law beyond uh, the regular expression so in the, in the same way the last point that we will see soon various languages that do not have corresponding regular expression yes there are some languages um, and uh, you can't uh, have the regular expression for those languages the corresponding regular expression i mean there will be a language like this and it will not be possible for you to have some regular expression for those languages so i hope you can study the concretization test further in detail by yourself uh, from different books there are a lot of books so that's all for today and let me go to the comment section for the last time and after reading the comments if there was any if there were any questions so i will definitely answer those questions and after that i will wind up i will finish the class okay i will end up the class so let's go to the comment section and uh, we don't have any serious and strong comment here server singer falso okay uh hamad abdullah uh, is asking that how the la 
hold false. Uh, Hamad Abdullah, if you process, uh, just uh, go back uh, and study the early slides of this lecture. First, you need to know how to derive a regular expression from a language. After understanding uh, those concepts, then come here and do this uh, on paper with pen or pencil. I mean, do some paperwork after that, you will automatically reach a conclusion that, that this law is false and it uh, holds false. And just put the values, and at the end of the day, you will understand this. You know, uh, while teaching online, sometimes it's not become easy to take you to the basics, to the grassroots level. Uh, as I already told you, I in fact requested you that please understand this topic uh, from book uh, by yourself at home with some basics concepts. So then you will understand it easily. Okay. So I hope uh, it was fun uh, that uh, we studied this topic today and it was easier for you guys. And uh, I hope you would have enjoyed it. So that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next class. And I hope, uh, as per the yeah. contents of our university, I have finished the coursework. I have finished the coursework. Uh, this is uh, 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 this was our second last topic of our course contents, and the very last topic of our course contents will be presented, will be delivered in our next lecture. Please. Uh, stay with me and uh, uh, be there with me in the next lecture. Till then, Allah Hafiz.